So the first thing I want to do, we've already confirmed that yes, you need this ankle taped. Um, you've had an injury, you can walk around though, so it, it should be good to go. Um, I need to check for cuts, blisters, abrasions. Okay, so a common thing would be at the back of the heel. A lot of people just have blisters there. Um, make sure there's no cuts. I want to ask, do you have any allergies to tapes or adhesive sprays? No. No? Um, another way you can ask it is, do you have allergies to band-aids usually? And a lot of people will know that answer. Um, but you'll, for the most part, you, they won't know until you do it once. Um, I also want to make sure there's no sock fluff on the ankle. If they've been wearing socks, so you would just brush it off. Okay. Now we get out our, we would prepare these. So imagine I've got my skin lube, it's like Vaseline. I just put a little bit on each side. Okay. Then I'm going to take my spray. I don't need to load this on. It's just a thin layer. I'm going to go from basically here to here. So my anchors with my tape are going to go at the base of the calf. So that's going to be where the you can see it start to flare out. Okay. So about here, you don't want your ankle tape job to be down here. That's too low. And we don't want it up here because if we put all this tape around the calf muscle, that's going to be really restrictive and uncomfortable. So just where the calf muscle starts to get bigger, then when we're at um, the distal part, so closer to the toes, we don't want to go right to the toes. We want to actually find, can you just turn your foot? At the side of your foot, there's a bump, and it's called the base of your fifth metatarsal. So it, that's, it sticks out quite a lot. So if you can find that when you're taping your partner, that's where a distal anchor will go. So it goes between here to here. So I don't need to spray all the way up here. Um, I don't need to spray the toes. So we'll go ahead, put a little bit on. You want to get the front and back, because remember, this is going to help the tape stick. Then I take these, I'm going to put one here. It doesn't matter if it's square or diamond shaped. Press them in, and when they have skin lube on them, they stick as well, but they'll sti stick to the toughener. Maybe. <laughs> then I take. Then I take my Pro Wrap, okay? So this, it will go on easier if you use a bit of tension and not make it too loose. Uh, this, I feel, I find for students, it's the hardest part of the ankle tape job, and it's not really part of it. So you just, it'll stick to the toughener, and you're gonna go around, and around, and around, get this on there so it sticks. A big thing you want to try and avoid right off the bat with your um, pre-wrap is wrinkles. And then to cut it, you can just pull it and it sticks to itself. So I've kind of gone in a figure eight fashion. However you can get this on is fine. Don't let this take you five minutes. This should be like quick. So it doesn't matter how many times you go on there. No, you don't want it to be thick just a thin layer, because it's just a protective barrier is really all it is. And I always want to make sure that when I get ready to put my tape on, my tape is going to stick partially to the skin and partially to the pro wrap. We don't want pro wrap or pre wrap sticking out the top and the bottom, because then we don't have the tape sticking to the skin. So less is often more with your pre wrap. So then I'll take my tape. Okay, and I'm going to start by identifying my anchors and my boundaries. So at the bottom and then the top. Remember, we want the toes up the whole way. So you can tell this to your athlete when you're taping them. They will probably forget. It gets uncomfortable and their foot will drop. You just have to keep reminding them throughout. So I'm going to start out right here at the top of the foot. I'm going to come all the way around. I'm going to rip the tape, see how it stays in my hand. Now here, this is the most common spot for it being too tight, because when you take a step down, this is where your foot splays and spreads out, and I'm putting a piece of non-elastic tape right there. So what I want to do is, I don't want to put it down right away, I want to press on the bottom of the foot as if my foot was splaying when I take a step, and I just gently lay that down. Okay, I don't want to pull it and tighten it. Okay. 
this strip has no supportive value, it's just an anchor. So we don't need to make it tight. Then at the top, okay. oh, hi there, come on in. Then at the top, I'm going to come across like this, and then stick it down. So notice how, because of the contour of the leg here, I've actually got an upside down V shape. Okay. If I were to go directly across, if I do it here, it might not really work out. This one, we're getting lower, so it, it does work okay. But if I go up here, oh, I don't want to do that to you. If I went the other way, see how it wants to go up there and it, it's puckering at the back? So that's what I want to avoid. Okay, I want everything nice and smooth. And at your top here, I've put two anchors in the pictures in your notes. There's three on some of them. It really doesn't matter. If you have a huge leg, you'll need three anchor points, and you might need two at the bottom. But as long as you have your boundaries identified. So those are your anchors. Then we're going to get into the stirrups. So a stirrup is like if you put your, your foot in a stirrup on a horse. Okay, It's going to go underneath the bottom and up to the sides. Now, for most sprained ankles, we want to go from the inside to the outside. So when I pull, so I'm going to stick it down, okay, just so that toes up. I'm going to go right over this bumpy part here, okay, right over top. Okay, right under the foot. And notice how I'm partially going under the heel. I'm not getting into the arch of the foot. So partially on the heel, up the other side over that same bumpy bone. Okay, and I'm gonna pull up. So if you can see his foot, okay, when I pull, see how it's moving? I want it really nice and tight. And you wanna try and limit how much the tape sticks up above your ankle the whole point of the anchor was to stick the tape onto it and create a boundary. So I'm going to do three stirrups. When you put the stirrup on, you usually will need to rub the tape to activate the glue with some heat, otherwise they just peel back. So when I put on my next one, I want to overlap them at the top so they get wider up here, but I'm always crossing over the same point underneath. So I'm going to come, I'm going to overlap by a half. Okay, then see how it's angled a little bit? I'm still going over that bone. Underneath though, it's going over the same spot. And then at the back, I'm gonna angle it so it's opposite. So it's going, fans up towards the back. I still wanna pull nice and tight. So see how it's coming off? So that's why I wanna really rub it. And then I do the opposite for my third one. So I start behind come underneath, and now I'm coming to the front. Okay, and those are your stirrups. Okay. So the point of the stirrups is to prevent what's called inversion and eversion. So your foot sort of, if you with your own foot, go turn your, the sole of your foot in and out. Okay, that's what the job is here. So if your stirrups aren't lined up in the middle, then you're not really going to be able to prevent that. And if you have athletes with active ankles, so, uh, ankle braces that they wear, this is one of the main features of an active ankle is to prevent this. And they do it with the plastic pieces. Getting a cramp? No? Okay, next thing we need to do, they're called horseshoes. Okay, so the horseshoe, it's just the shape almost. Um, of the pieces of tape. So basically we're going to fill in this whole area. So we're going to put the tape on that bottom anchor and we're going to go around the back. So this is kind of where the basket weave comes into play. We've done all of our stirrups first, but some people will do one stirrup, one horseshoe, one stirrup, one horseshoe, and that's where the basket weave comes in. So we're going to go over the back and you can see how if we didn't have a heel and lace pad here, Okay, this is the piece of tape that might get uncomfortable. It doesn't matter which direction these pieces go. So then we're going to come to the front. 
and we really want to limit our wrinkles here because we don't want to rub it. Okay, and then back to your anchor. Just like that. Okay. Now we're going to overlap by a half. Okay, all the way around the back. And I need to start changing the contour uh, or changing the angle because of the contour of the ankle. So now I've got a V shape. Remember up here my V was upside down. Now I've got a V shape down here. And if you find that it's puckering, you just have to change the angle that you're putting the tape down at. Don't fight the tape. Um, change slightly which way you're, you're putting it. And we're going to go again. And around the mid portion here, you can basically just go around um, horizontally. There's really no angle. And then I might want to do one more. And see now it's the upside down V. So now we've almost covered everything. Now we need to do the heel lock. The heel lock is really what's giving you the support. And it's the most difficult portion of the tape job to learn and get right. And film. So with a heel lock, basically we are going to lock the heel in this position, okay, with putting uh, with some long strips of tape. This is one of the times where it's an exception where you can go around without cutting the tape or ripping the tape, okay? So we're gonna start at the top and I need to angle my tape downwards. So I'm gonna go over the bump, okay? So the medial malleolus is what it's called. Over the bump, across the Achilles, around the heel, underneath the arch, and back to the top. So that's half of the heel lock. Then I'm, the tape wants to keep going, so I'm going to keep going with it and do the other half of the heel lock, and that will give me one. If you find that the tape is not behaving well, you can also rip it here and do a half, and then do a half separately. Okay, so I'm going to mirror the exact thing, exact same thing. So over that bump, which on this side is the lateral malleolus, across the Achilles down underneath the bottom of the foot and back to the top. And you need to do these strips with a fair amount of tension because this is what's really locking your ankle and your heel into that stable position. Okay, And if you find at the end of your tape job the athlete says it's not tight enough, you could do more heel locks on top of what you've done. So that's one full heel lock. I need to do another one. So I'm going to start at the same point, cross the bump, cross the Achilles, underneath the foot, back to the top, and this one I'm going to keep going. So across that bump, across the Achilles, underneath the foot, and back to the top. And so by doing that, I've kind of locked everything in. I don't have any open spaces except I have one little one under the foot. But these are your, your important strips, okay? I could have probably done that one a little bit tighter. I'm just going to do another one, just so you feel how tight it should be. But you only need to do two full heel locks. Okay. So now, we're essentially done. We just need to close the whole thing um, with some strips to make it look better, to seal up all the ends and give it a little bit more compressive support. We also need to look for windows. Windows are little areas where you can see the pro wrap or the pre wrap sticking through. So the heel does not count, the heel should be open. Um, you can see underneath I've got one little window. Okay. You can close the windows now or you can close the whole tape job and then deal with the windows because they might get sealed off when you're doing your closing strips. I know that with what I'm going to do, I'm not going to get to this, so I'm just going to go underneath. And when you're closing a window, you don't want one little tiny piece of tape. Okay? You want a longer strip because you don't want it to come off. And 
the reason why you need to close this is because the skin can get pinched in that window and that's where we can have blisters. Common ones are often little triangles on the inside or the outside. And you'll get some people that no matter what you do, you're always having a window just because of the shape of their foot um, or the way you are applying the tape. Okay, so now I can close the whole thing. So I wanna seal off uh, my anchor and these all these little pieces of tape. So I'm going to do exactly what I did at the very beginning, but I want the tape to be half on, at least partially on the skin. Okay, I'm going to come around, and we're not too tight. I'm going to push on the bottom of the foot and just gently lay it down. Now I'm going to work my way all the way up to the top. So I'm essentially doing horseshoes again. And for this part, it doesn't matter if you go up or if you go down. It doesn't matter if you, you just need to get it down somehow. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. And if up until this point you've been uh, less than neat and tidy, this is your chance to really fix things up a little bit and make the outside look good. windows again, make sure you don't have any. Check cap refill. So I'm going to press on the big toe, make sure the color comes back two to three seconds. If it's a female and they have nail polish on, you can just do it um, just below the toenail. You can do it on the other toes as well, it doesn't matter. Uh, then I'm going to smooth the tape ends down and do a manual check of support. So this is where I'm just going to wiggle around the ankle, okay, see what it feels like in my hands. Then I would get the athlete to hop down and, you know, if it's a soccer player, think about some sport specific things they would have to do. So, you know, go for a jog, um, do some cutting movements, grab a ball, just some sports specific things to test out how this feels and tell them, you know, if it's too tight, come back to me. If it's too loose, come back, um, let me know how it's feeling. So. You want to have some time between this and the game to test it out, not just two minutes before volleyball. Do this, okay, go and jump, and oh, it wow. doesn't, yeah, it doesn't work out. Okay, and it's always best if your athlete hasn't been taped before to try this in um, a practice first, just to see if they like it. Um, it's best if you can to avoid doing it for the first time right before a game. Any questions? Was it pretty similar to the way you've done it before? Oh, just you've done it before. Yeah, but just way better. Oh, <laughs> well, I've done it a few times. <laughs> so it just, it's going to take practice to get it looking neat and tidy, but it's those key elements, um, you know, the, the stirrups and the heel locks and the boundaries. And the heel locks is one I know it's always. It just takes, yeah. just takes practice. So it, it's great that we have a small group, so we'll have lots of time to fix up, you know, if you're, you know, give it a go and I'll just try and make some adjustments. And often it's just changing your ang angle a little bit and that is what will make it way easier for you. I'll just show you how to take it off with a shark. Do you know how already, James? Have you used it on yourself? Uh, just enough. <laughs> yeah, so it's best with the shark um, to have the athlete do it themselves. You can't really, it's pretty low risk of cutting yourself because the blade faces up. However, I have seen people do it. Um, but you give it to the athlete and you get them to stick the little tip underneath. Um, this can be hard to get going if you have toughener up here, but the blade will face up and then you're, they're gonna slide it in an L shape. So you don't wanna hit the bone. You wanna go around and then out the front. It's also difficult if your shark blade is dull. So the more you use it, the duller it gets. You can buy replacement blades or you can just buy a new one. Okay, or try a different one. We have lots here. So give that a try and see how it goes. Some athletes just prefer to take it off one by one too, which sometimes is faster. And you can help the person too. Um, it's just good if they try and do it themselves first. Perfect. Well, that looks great. Then you peel it back, and you can see.
see how it kind of looks like a cast. Minimal hair loss. And this is where you can really see on the inside, did I have any windows? You know, does it look nice and neat and tidy? And so it's, and you can see on here how it's overlapped by a half quite often. Right? The back of the head is a little bit wide, but um, you just don't want your pieces of tape meeting side by side because then you're going to get pinching happening. Okay? Any questions before you get going?